persistence. We talk about it, but it always does pay. Our guest today literally called in to a radio station he was trying to get a job at and said he was Eddie Vedder so he can get through the line. Join us on another episode of the Get Over It podcast. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Get Over It podcast. I am your host, Dr. Christopher Fasano. Before we begin, I just want to remind you, the best way to get new episodes on the Get Over It podcast is to subscribe to your favorite pod player, whether that's Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, wherever you can find a podcast, you can find the Get Over It podcast. If you prefer to watch a video format of the show, uh, you can do so at YouTube. So on our YouTube channel, just subscribe. Also, leave us a review if you're liking the content and let us know how we can do better. All right. So our guest today in episode 20 is Jeff Morad. Jeff is the program director and on-air personality for early EQX, Jam and Toast on 102.7 EQX. He's out of hailing out of Vermont. I believe I got it. Jeff, what up, man? Welcome to the podcast. No wonder you're a PhD, Dr. For Chris, Dr. Christopher. You, you nailed it fantastically. Did I do that well? Uh, Thank you. you. Go ahead, did. man. Welcome. During that introduction, and I appreciate it, and, and I'm honored to be a, a part of this great podcast with Over It. Love the company. Love everything that you do there in Albany. Uh, but I was wondering, what the heck does podcast stand for? What is pod? What's you know, I don't pod? know, actually. It's a good question. And you're the only person that's ever asked that. And I've never really thought about that. So what are we casting? A pod. Mm-hmm. What is the pod? A pod? pod. We know a pod player plays the podcast. So that implies okay. that a pod, are we, are we emerging out of something uh, after we have you're this? Like we're, we're the peas in the pod? I think so. Is that what the deal Maybe is? that's what it is. Maybe it's like, you know, two peas in a pod, a good conversation, uh, Maybe that's where it came from. That's everybody's homework out there. I want everybody to look up the definition of podcast. Um, have you got it? I mean, I want to. We're going to get into it. Like you're always on the microphone. Do you pod? Like our radios, our radio shows inherently pod become podcasts. Do you have a podcast? Or are you sick of talking into a microphone at the end of your day? Basically, I am sick of talking into a microphone at the end of the day. Um, I host a podcast with our friends out at Indian Ladder Farms in Eltamont, cool. New York. So so that's a lot of fun. I do enjoy listening to podcasts from time to time. And what I appreciate about yours is the length of it. Because sometimes these podcasts are just, you know, you got to drive across the country to listen to one. So uh, <laughs> It's true. <laughs> I, I, I love the content and I love the length of what you have going on, Dr. Christopher. You know, um, you know, what's really funny. Um, people that get really are really into podcasts. They play, they'll listen to the podcast on like two X speed or like two and a half X speed to your point yeah. of like, just trying to consume as much as possible. Um, and like, this was, I, I listened to podcasts, but I, you know, I'm much, I much prefer to be on this side of the podcast and doing it rather than actually sitting and listening to a show. If that's at all ironic, I don't know. Uh, but I listened, I tried listening to my, like a show on 2X and then I listened to myself on 2X and it's not comfortable. Like I, I don't no. like it. I feel like I'm doing someone wrong. Like if I'm listening to, that's not how you sound. Like I feel like it takes away a little bit of the human element. I don't know, man. It's weird. It's dizzying, and anybody that's listening to this one right now, go ahead and go with the two, two and a half times speed on it and just see how ridiculously fast it is. It's an unbelievable, difficult thing to follow, and I don't think you're going to enjoy it, so stop right now. Well, I think, I think it just it speaks to the time that we're in and, these, and, and humans, like, insatiable desire to want to get things so fast. Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm. like, I don't know, man. Like, this would be a good segue to your industry, to where you are, um, like – how does that affect radio, right? Because radio is is still unique in that I can't really control it. You know, like I turn it on and it's there. And it's um, I know certain things like the type of music and I know you're on at a certain time, but I don't know what happens with the songs. And like I have a nine-year-old, to him, that concept dude is foreign as hell. Like, wait, I can't, I can't go back. So like, yeah. like, so ha- like, talk to me about that as you've been in the industry and has it affected something? You still see a desire for that? Uh, you know, there, there's so much there. Uh, so let's start off with what the point was about, you know, we want as society, we want yes, things correct. right now. What's next? What's happening? What's, what's, what's the thing? Um, over the course of my, I've been at EQX now for about 15 years as program director, about eight years. 
And let's just talk about those eight years as the program director, because uh, that's the position where you really are hands on with choosing the music that hits the airwaves and things of that nature. So eight years ago, when I took over, uh, a song would cons it'd be considered burned out at about 1500 spins. People didn't want to hear it anymore. That's when you start to get complaints. You guys play this song all the time. Stop playing it. So that was 1500, the number on that. Today, that number is 300. So if we play a really? song 300 really? times, so that's how much things have gone to wow. what's next. I'm sick of this. Give me something else. Uh, and, you know, you figure uh, we don't subscribe to Nielsen ratings or anything here. We like to stay truly independent. Uh, so I don't I can't quote numbers on things, but I think people still listen to the radio about 10 minutes a day. So if you listen to the radio 10 minutes a day and we only play a song 300 times over the course of. Uh, that's maybe a couple of months a song will run and it'll take us a couple of months to get to 300. Um, you've maybe heard the song once or twice and right. then we're sick of it. We're right. on to what's next. And I think that has a lot to do with YouTube, Spotify, all of the, the outlets that are there for people to listen to music and that ability to click next or go back, you know, to control it. Uh, I think the advantage that we have as an FM broadcaster, as a radio station is kind of the uniqueness of the shared experience. If you're listening to Spotify or YouTube, uh, the person in the car behind you isn't having the same experience. Right. They're not hearing the same guest. They're not hearing the same song at the same time. So there's a lot to be said in society, I think, about shared experiences. And that's what that's what radio gives to people is collectively enjoying Dude, it. I, that's some. that's actually some deep stuff. Well, I, you know, I never really thought about it like that from a from a, you know, a connection, an emotional connective level, which I feel like we lack a lot nowadays, you know, especially through pandemic times, we have retreated and sort of went to our own situations. And um, you're right. Like if I'm, if, if you're on a highway and there's, there's 50 cars, um, the odds of you guys, how many people are listening to that same thing nowadays? Probably not a lot, right? That That's pretty low. Back in the day, uh, I could say that now and feel like that's a real old thing to say. Back in my day, <laughs> You probably would have a lot more cars listening to the same thing because your options were 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 limited, right? So, but 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 it's not like you guys don't satisfy the new era, correct? You're putting your your streaming, you're putting your stuff like you said. I imagine that I can go on your site and find uh you know songs you play like stream it is that right you guys adapt absolutely yeah we have a we have a free app that's available for all the all the devices we stream through our website weqx.com we have our own spotify playlist mm -hmm. that we put out there so if you don't want to hear my annoying banter in between songs you just want to discover new music there's the eqx new music playlist our top uh, 1027 countdown for however many years Spotify has existed, you know, 21 and back. Those are all up there. So uh, we try and, uh, you know, we're fans of music. So we want right. to use our uh, time spent listening to it and finding new artists and great songs and sharing those with everybody on as many platforms as possible. So 50,000 watts, the FM signal, uh, that's a great way to get it out to the four states that we do. But, uh, you know, if you can have us in your phone and download loaded on a Spotify playlist when you're flying or anything like that. Uh, that's cool. That's a, that's, that's a cool way to go, I think. But you, people do like the banter as well, which is why you have some shows that are talk more than, you know, there's more talk, I should say more talk than just in between if I'm just tuning in to listen to, to music. So, you know, from, from a programming perspective, how do you balance that, right? Because there's some people like, dude, I don't want to hear you talk. I just want to hear music. And then there's right. people who, like, no, nah, I, I find these people to be very interesting in what they have to say. So I, I tune in for that as well. So what's the balance there? I mean, I imagine you listen to, to what people say, but talk to me a little bit about how you balance that as, as someone who's in that game. Being local and independent, we try and focus solely on that with music being the star of the show. So the advantage that we have over any of the other places where people can listen to and discover music. We are local. We're right here in this Victorian house in Manchester, Vermont. So we focus on local businesses and getting the great word out about uh, all the hard work and incredible products that they put out. And then, you know, the, the crazy little wacky stories that tend to happen in upstate New York and Southern <laughs> Vermont and, and the Berkshires and that kind of thing. And so, uh, you know, just we, we keep it quick in between the songs. We, on average, play about 14 songs an hour, which is quite a bit for, for yeah. uh, FM 
commercial radio station. Uh, so, you know, just real quick hits in between, just trying to stay topical, local, fun, and informative, especially when it comes to the music, because a lot of the stuff we play is unfamiliar with, with 90% of the listeners. So uh, just like when we first hear a band and want to be educated about them, we, we try and pass that along. So, you know, we're, we'll wiki the band for you. You don't have to do it yourself. Cool. So, uh, so you just mentioned you're in a, in a Victorian house for, in your studio in Vermont. Um, and so that's where you are currently. I want to go back time machine us back and take me through how you got to where you are in that building today um how you got into this game you know i always i'm always fascinated to learn about how someone entered into where they are you know in terms of their profession or, or career so why don't we start there man like it's a music was it a music drive uh tell me a little bit about what drew you to what you're doing now Absolutely. And through every step of the process uh, that ends up with me here at EQX, basically, I just uh, lied, cheated and stealed my way into every right. single position. Okay. So uh, it was a love of music. I mean, honestly, my first memory is driving to church with my parents and hearing Stevie Wonder on the radio. And I was like, music, music's pretty freaking cool, it's man. Cool. And they, my, my parents were big fans, always taking us to concerts and things of that nature. So uh, I couldn't be without music. And in college, I remember sitting on my apartment room floor, uh, listening to the college radio station. And I was a business logistics major at the time, completely uninterested in that. So I decided business to call logistics, the radio station. That's interesting in itself right there. You know, today I would be paying the bills with that degree. <laughs> I'd be doing real well. <laughs> Supply chain, this and that. Yeah, that, you're that right. Oh, like that's right, man. Have. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's right. Uh, but no, instead, my love of music uh, made me pick up the phone, call the DJ at the radio station. I was like, how, how do you get on the air? And they said, well, we have a we have a meeting uh, Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. or whatever, you know, come come to that. So this was actually uh, a college that I was not attending. I was at Penn State and this was Gannon University's radio station in Erie, Pennsylvania. And so I uh, went onto the campus, went into the meeting. They said, we have an open shift. I raised my hand. I took that shift. They never asked if I was a student or anything. I think they were just desperate like, to yeah, have dude, someone. Yeah, come on in. Yeah. Yeah. So no one wants to work the 6 a.m. shift, right? But oh, as a natural uh, early bird kind of person, I was like, I'll take the 6 to 9 a.m. shift. So I did And you've that. never done this before. Like you're not, never you, done it you never were behind the boards or never, ever, whatever. They didn't care. They just put you in the chair and that was it. Okay. Yep. And it was all, you know, it speaks volumes for uh, learning hands on when you're live on the radio and things are about to go real bad. You learn quickly <laughs> how to not make them go bad. Oh, man. Um, and so I'm doing that. And a buddy of mine asked me at the end of the semester if I wanted to go hang out the summer at his parents beach house in Cape Cod. It's absolutely I want to do that. Definitely. Uh, so I did that. And I'm thinking to myself, uh, maybe this is something I want to pursue. I'm having fun. I miss being on the radio over summer here. So I start applying to local radio stations on Cape Cod. So you're uh, from not, you're from this area, though, correct? Like where you're I'm, born? I'm from raised, Western Pennsylvania. You're from Western PA. Erie, okay. Pennsylvania. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm on Cape Cod and I, I put together this tape, as I think most people from my generation did, like, you know, dual cassette tapes. Yep. You kind of splice together mm -hmm. your area. Air check. Mm -hmm. Your air check is your resume and radio. So I put together a little tape. I send it off to the radio stations. They're not getting back to me. It, the end of the summer's coming. I'm gonna have to go back to school. This sucks. Um, so I called the radio station and I told the receptionist that I was Eddie Vetter calling in for an on-air interview. Are you really? So, so she puts me through to the program yes, director. He man. really he yes. appreciated the lie and gave me like an overnight shift or whatever. So now I'm getting paid to do radio <laughs> F college. I'm not going back to college. I stay at his parents' beach house. They don't even know that I'm continuing to stay there through the winter. It's not winterized. Uh, that turns into five years on the Cape working at, uh, at a rock station. Not there. at this house though. You didn't stay in the house for five years. Tell me. I, no, no. I was like, Dude, that's excellent. Out. If you just like, hey, you just that would have been great, <laughs> but no, I bounced all over the Cape. Um, for, for five years I was there. Then I went to go visit a buddy and now I'm starting to realize, uh, if I go to visit a buddy somewhere, I end up moving there because I went to go visit a friend in Denver, uh, on the flight back, I'm, I'm reserving the U-Haul, making the plans to move out there. I move out without a gig. 
I end up running into an old college friend at a bar who works at a radio station. I get my foot in the door yeah, there. Yeah, but wait, I'm wait, working. wait. Why did you just yeah. bail? You had a gig. So you were in the yeah. Cape, right? You had this gig. You were there. And then you're out. Like, what's up? Christopher, like, have you ever been to Cape Cod in the winter? Um, I have not. But yeah, I know no, I would know no. this area enough to know it's probably not a lot going on over there. There's nothing. I think there, it's a 70 mile stretch, right? It's like your arm. There's 70 miles there. Uh, there's one bar that's open in the winter. So that after five winters, a young single dude, I, I couldn't take it anymore. The bright lights, big city of Denver. That's where I'm going. Uh, so, yeah, I get hired okay. there. I'm working overnights at a jam and oldies station, which way more awesome than I ever would have expected it to be. Uh, I kind of hang out in the morning trying to learn stuff from from the, the legendary morning show host. He ends up bringing me on as his executive producer, and I turned into a character on that Fart Friday show. Fart Friday thing I kind of uh, call all those morning zoo now, radio Now, what was shows. this station? Where was What was this? Where was this? This was, this in, was, Chicago. This this was in, in Denver. In Denver, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was called Jam and 92.5. Uh, jam and oldies, okay. R and B, right. really fun stuff. Um, I, I end up a big character on their morning show. The this was for CBS now, so okay. um, I'm working for. They were CBS broadcasting at the time, probably iHeart now. Um, and the radio station down the hall is a top forty station, and they they want to steal me from the jam and oldies station. So uh, that was simple. They offered a ton more money, and I went and worked there. So now I'm working for a top 40 morning zoo radio show that plays maybe one song over a four hour shift. And after a few years of doing that, uh, I really clicked in my head. Money doesn't matter. I got into radio because of my love of music. And here I'm just I'm making an ass out of myself on the radio for a paycheck and not enjoying that. But why, though? What were they what were they music. doing, man? They were they wanted you to just be the show. They wanted you. Is that why there was just uh, one song? It's just you there talking and shticking like for that's all we did. We, we just taught, you know, read stupid emails from soccer moms about. Okay. Uh, I have to go to this dinner party and I don't know what it was. It was ridiculous. It wasn't my lifestyle at all. And I was kind of the man out on the street thing doing the, the jackass stunts. And so you're faced, you're faced with that, that people get, which is like, okay, I got to a good place. I got some Mm. money coming in, but this is not at all what I like to be doing, which is a common question and a common occurrence in life. And so a lot of people have to then say to themselves, I, this is I'm doing this mainly for the money, and is it, is, it, is it like satisfying enough the dollar for me to continue, or do I follow what I originally got into this for? Which is a key that happens a lot, and people rarely go with the thing that drives them, right? And it's completely understandable why you don't. It's scary, you know, especially in this. So like you did that. Was it any thought at all, or you were like, screw it, I'm out of here? Like you did you were you like really thoughtful about it, or you're like, I got I can't do it. It's just not me. You know how my boss at CBS in Denver found out about it? I didn't show up to work for three days, so they drove by my house and found me loading up the U-Haul. <laughs> so you were just out. You were out. I was out, man. And like like the dick that I was, I didn't tell them. There's a lot of a lot of regrets that I have. Right. But not really because I've t- taken care of me. Very selfish for sure. But – What's important is that you get to a place in your life where you're happy so that you can make other people happy. And at that time, you know, I'm blaming the job. I'm blaming the company. I'm blaming uh, my wife at that time. Everything's miserable. Every, and it has nothing to do with me is what right. I was thinking. Right. Well, you, you know, you turn around and look at that now and it's like, no, I was making everything miserable because I wasn't happy. Right. And, and you, you know, you can't make the people around you happy unless you're happy. So uh, loaded up the U-Haul and, and came to this area because EQX, uh, I don't know outside of the radio world because I've never lived out, but inside the radio world, EQX is very well known, very well respected for still to this day being independent. We're one of two independent alternative stations left in the country. And uh, Brooks Brown, the, the gentleman that established this place, was just really uh hard about remaining independent he was he was brutal uh in his, but in did his you have conversations with them before you bailed or you just got you just no. went with the no. hope okay yep just like i did it previously like 
you go there and then you make it happen. If there's a will, there's a way, right? There, there's no way I'm ever going to take no for an answer. So I moved to, well, you know, it's funny. I, I looked at a map when I was in Denver and I was like, oh, Lake George looks like it's pretty close to Manchester, Vermont. That I would like to live at a lake. So did that. And it's not that far. You know, everything in this area of the right. country is about right. a 45 minute exactly. hour drive yeah, anyway. Yeah. So it wasn't bad. Uh, so I'm trying to get hired here at EQX, living in Lake George. I took a job at the Sagamore Resort. Beautiful. Um, and so I'm going. I'm coming from you know this big popular position in Denver, very well known everywhere I would go uh, to be in a bellhop at the Sagamore, taking care of all those rich people who you know just spit on you, and it's ridiculous. Uh, but the crew there was super fun. Uh, you know, you ever work in hospitality? Oh man. Uh, it is. It's a blast, right? Have you done that, Christopher? Uh, I was uh, bu- I bus tables for a while. I've been a part of like wait staffs. So I lived down in Florida in Miami, and I was trying to figure out. I was DJing as well, and I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. And I picked up hours, and it could be. It was tourist pop, tourist place, so super crowded. So it is not. You're taking. You're taking incoming, man. You know, but like yeah, you said, yeah. you find you find whatever in your crew and your team that you work with because they're going through the same stuff. You know, they're going through the mm-hmm. same battle. Yeah. Yeah. So it was an absolute blast as I continued to try and get employed here. Finally, uh, got my foot in the door doing doing some overnight and fill in shifts or whatever. The radio station came upon hard times. They had to lay off all the part timers. So I'm I'm back at the Sagamore. And then, uh, and then I got the call, you know, we need a new morning show host. Are you available? And, and, uh, I've been hosting the morning show for, for nearly the last 15 years now. Did you have to tell them that you were Eddie Vedder to get in your first thing this time or no, you were good. <laughs> you know, and, and maybe that's why I'm here and maybe here for the rest of my life. Cause this is the one gig that I didn't lie my way into. That's so, great, man. Uh, that's, so that's great. Cool. But I see like persistence, you see that business logistics, man, you just got up and left, you got in the truck yeah. and the car and you were out. And like, that's an extreme and people will hear that and be like, wow, how can one do that? You know, I hear this. People talk to me a lot about that. They're like, Chris, it's not that easy. It's not that easy. No, of course it's not that easy. And nothing's easy in the in the grand scheme of things. And, you know, I don't know your situation at the time, man, like if you were, had a family or what's going on, but people, con- that compounds everything. But, you know, I think too in this pandemic, what I've learned really is that you don't really have as much time as it feels like. And I know it's like corny, but it's really true, actually. If you, if you, if you just go like how many weeks until the average person lives it's not a lot of weeks dude uh so you really have to ask yourself what means the most to you and what's going to be the most fulfilling in that time and go and just go for it yeah that's i'm really glad that's great point chris that that is so true man and people need to be reminded of that as as often as possible because it is uh you know we don't get a second chance at this it goes by quickly and now you're going to have me obsessed with how many weeks we're actually on the do that you know my brother did that to me the other day he was like i want you to do, do something for me Tell me in your mind, and I'm not going to say it. I want everybody to do it. Go like the average length that a human lives, you know, and then how many weeks that is. It is shockingly low. The number you're thinking is not even close to what it actually is. Go do it. And if that doesn't kick you in the ass, I don't know what does. But like, I, I, I you know, again, it's never that simple. But sometimes at its most pure part, it is. Um, because in the end, we're just humans that thrive on emotion. And if you're not feeling emotionally good, like you said before, everything else around you can just go to crap. And then you really, you're contaminating everything else, right? Um, in this world of contamination that we're, we're dealing with. Uh, two <laughs> things I want to talk to you about uh, before we, we we don't have enough time today is this concept of independent. You talked about uh-huh. that. For me yeah. more and for everybody, explain the difference. You know, when, so, when you guys are saying we're truly independent as a radio show, what does that mean? Uh, and why is it so hard to come by? The owner of the radio station, Mimi Brown, Brooks passed away uh, seven or eight years ago or so. His wife, Mimi, continues to run the radio station. She's, I'm pounding my foot on the floor. She's in the office right below it. So that's that's the president, the GM, the owner of the radio station is right, right there. Uh-huh. We, um, we have very low overhead because we have very few employees. So, uh, you know, we all take out the trash. We all shovel. We, we do everything that needs to be done in order to keep the bills down so that, uh, w- you know, p- there's not a lot of money to be made in radio, but we, we earn a living. We keep the lights right. on. We, we pay the FCC bill. Uh, so independent means we don't answer to anybody except for Mimi downstairs and, and our, and our listeners, 
uh, as long as Mimi and our listeners are happy, uh, we can continue to do whatever we want. Radio stations that are owned by corporations will, they don't listen to music. I'm going to burst the bubble of everybody here. You listen to your, your favorite corporate radio station. They look at charts yep. because that's what matters to them. Uh, they do subscribe to Nielsen ratings. They need to have those numbers high. So whatever does high. that is what they are going to be pushing, yes. right? Yeah. Yes. And so we don't care if a song never makes it onto the chart. Obviously, we would love that for the artist. But if we like the song, we go right into the studio and put it on the air. That affords us uh, the opportunity to fall into the good graces of many artists because they're like, holy shit, there's a radio station in Manchester, Vermont that's playing us. And then, you know, it's the Albany market. And then that gives them somewhere to go tour and they get up on the stage and fans are singing back their lyrics to them, maybe on the other side of the planet. And it's like, that's the power right. of independent radio right there. And, uh, and, and, and of course that happened. No, so you go, you finish and then I got it. Go ahead. And of course that had happens for major artists. They, they get their airplay on corporate radio stations and sell out arenas and things like that. But we like it a little smaller. You know, we like, we like empire live. We like the hollow. Do we hate SPAC? Hell no. Uh, but our artists tend to be more of those, you know, they draw a hundred, 200, maybe 500 fans to a show. Um, because it's like, you know, McDonald's sells billions and billions of burgers and a great restaurant will sell a couple of burgers. Right. You, you know, the better burgers always better, but it's not the most popular. So I imagine then for you as someone that gets to have that say and that license to to like procure and take and like this, this is what we want to play. This is what we're going to put on being in a. In, in a in a situation like that of independent gives you that license much more obviously right because you wouldn't have that sort of freedom and the ability to sit and really think right because it's purely driven by numbers that are sort of out of your control even if you want to do that you probably so i imagine for you again coming back to this core of what you do who you are this is the perfect setting for you because you get to really explore your passion still without someone being like nah i mean you answer to people but not in that way a very different way Right. And, and exactly right, Chris. And, uh, you know, another th great thing about being independent, I, I, uh, I talked to a friend who runs a radio station uh, in, in a major metropolitan area. And uh, this was when the new Jack White song came and it's an alternative radio station. So to mm -hmm. me, it seemed like a no brainer. I said, how's the Jack White song doing? And she said, well, we're not playing the new Jack White song. It's why are you do you not like it? Uh, what's the deal? Uh, she said, no, Jack White hasn't played City X. So there's a lot of politics involved mm. and we don't play that game whatsoever. Like to not play a core artist of alternative radio uh, out of like, you know, well, he's not playing our city. That That's just foolish, man. Right. Like, really? That's why we're not going to put it on? Right. Like, yeah, is so, it good or not? So that entire, like, that entire city doesn't get to hear uh, the, the wonderful sounds of Jack White because of politics. Talk to me about the pandemic and radio. Um, you know, there we talk about this a lot. On we talked about it a lot on the show. Uh, you know, we work with a lot of different businesses, so it affects it affects different. It has affected industries. Clearly, service we talked about service clearly got annihilated and and it was terrible. Radio, you're still there, right? You're there in that booth. I imagine at first you had you guys probably were like, well, we got to fit. You know, I, I wonder what that first you know, a couple months was like, and then once you sorted it out, nothing really changed for, for you guys really did it. And I imagine people tuned in me more. There more people were home. Like, what did you see? Talk to me about that. Yeah. You, you're smart. You hit all the nails on the head there, Chris. Um, we did freak out at first because we're such fans of music, uh, live music, concerts, mm. uh, events was 95% of our business. Mm. And so that's gone. Uh, thankfully with joy, I want to give joy a shout out. She's the midday host. Um, she really embraced, she, she immediately recognized small local businesses are going to need to get their word out. When are they open? Are they yeah. open? What right. are, they, are they doing? Oh, so, that kind of thing. So we reached out to all of those, the, those, uh, local companies saw great success with it. They kept coming back. I want more advertising. They would tell their friends that own businesses, this is really working for us. So that quickly filled the void of the concerts and live events. Um, as far as 
yes, a lot more people were listening and we realized, uh, you know, we're, we're members of this community. We, we see right. people out all the time. Uh, people are scared about this. Uh, people are confused by this. There's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of information. It's tough to weed through it. So uh, a shout out to Keller, who's our afternoon host here. Um, he said something that still t- sticks with me now, right in the beginning. He said, it's all about tone. We have to have the proper mm-hmm. tone on the air. We can't freak out one way or the other about things. We have to deliver a, a soothing message of, of hope and fun and things of that nature uh, when appropriate. And, and so that was, that was what we went with. And uh, that worked because we've received lots of, uh, of loving and caring messages from listeners who, who say we helped carry yeah, them through. Yeah, got and- you through a really crappy one of the worst times in our history. I mean, I was telling yeah. my son the like during this that like I know you I know you can't comprehend this right now, but when you're older and you you know this of this what we're going through and what we're living through, this is going to be talked about. You know, this is I hope another one of these one in a hundred year or fifty or however long long gaps, maybe once in my our lifetime events, and this is going to be something that is going to be looked back on as one of the most awful periods, right? And um, what, I mean, I'm, I'm in the mental health field. I host a mental health podcast. Like people are not doing well still. And we're looking for anything to your point. It's a great, the tone is so great because there's a lot of hysterics, a lot of, a lot of counting tickers and cases and numbers and death counts. And like, it's like crazy. Um, you want to feel good, man. You want to l- look for it. And through this venue that we're doing, through radio, through that sort of inter, is like bring it back to full circle to the beginning. It allows you to connect. And I think that's why probably people tuned in more. They wanted to connect with something, you know. Yeah, hey, Chris. Props to you. I know this has been a very difficult time to be a parent. Uh, you know, I I don't have children, so I, I feel like. I'm half as stressed as everyone else because I know everything you parents and teachers and the kids themselves are going through. And also, thank you very much for your work in the, in the mental health care field. That is uh, the, couldn't be more important than it is right now. Always been important and always will be. But right now, yeah, people are people are hurting. And and that's another thing that we decided to do here at the radio station with the with the uh, uh, drug overdoses mm-hmm. and the mental health issues and everything that people seem to want to sweep under the carpet. We started a a one hour show that's on every Thursday night called clean jams. And it uh, focuses on addiction, recovery, mental health, all of that stuff. So uh, anyone that's listening to this podcast, uh, clean jams, Thursday nights, 11 to midnight. And you can also listen to, there's about 51 episodes of it. Now you can listen at cleanjams.com. It's helping a lot of people because uh, that's awesome, man. And, and again, because you know, I feel like people are tuning in because they want to connect. And then if you, you're able to give them that in that feeling. I think that's, it's super helpful. And you know, the one, the the positive and all of the negative has been that there has been this incredible spotlight been put on mental health. I've never seen that before. You know, it's typically been like, yeah, we know people are depressed or whatever or whatever. Now it's, we know it, it's bad. And there's a lot of money going into it now, because of course, right? Like into making therapy more available. Like it's, it's, I hope that in, you know, in the, in this bad that is this rise of mental health problems, there are, is this renewed feeling that, you know what, my mental health is just as important as my physical health. So if I'm going to the gym or if I'm running on the treadmill, I need to work out my mind as well. Um, you know, um, last few minutes, another, one thing that people love to do, um, you know, that, that really helps them and gives them something is you mentioned live music. It got crushed. It really like live venues in itself. How has it been? Have you seen it come back? Like, wh- where are we in that world of, of live venue, live music? Do you think it'll ever get back to where it was? Yeah, absolutely. I do think, I know it's going to get back. Uh, I'm not going to say when that's going to happen because I've already guessed wrong about 18 <laughs> times, once a month or more. Um, but, you know, thankfully, the technology has existed and people who know a lot about technology stepped right up to bat for all of us live music fans with these, you know, online concerts and things of that nature. Uh, A lot of a shout out to local musicians, Jocelyn and Chris, 
who do like an insane amount of online entertainment uh, and incorporate their fans in. And that's kind of neat because, uh, you know, th- there always is something good that comes out of something bad. I, I hate at concerts, uh, people talking and the fact that I can't talk to my friends, but when you're streaming, who cares if right. you're talking to you or right. whatever that, and then you're also able to, you know, to have little side chats and stuff and messages and stuff of like that. So it's been kind of fun. There's nothing like being in no. a venue. Uh, sweaty, packed rock and roll with with family, friends, and 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 even strangers. Uh, but we'll, we will get back to that. And and I've been to some shows, um, you know, and, and I feel like this area of the country fantastic at being masked up and being as yes. as safe as possible and being understanding about restrictions. And uh, one thing that I have noticed, I'm sure you have too, Chris, and everyone listening, uh, we have become so used to the word canceled. Uh, not only because of cancel culture, but like I've never seen so many concerts and events. <laughs> it's almost like life. expected. Like you would never do that yeah. in my day, right? Where it's like, dude, I'm going to this show. Never would you be like, oh, I hope it's, I hope it doesn't get can't, you know, maybe if it get canceled, what are we gonna do? If we get can-? like, you never really thought about that because if it happened, right. it'd be so bizarre. Like, wait, is yes. that person? Are they all yeah. right? You know, right. now it's just like expected as part of the calculus. Like, well, it's probably yeah. gonna be canceled. <laughs> Yeah. So if anything, uh, another positive that'll come out of this, we all are very capable of making last minute adjustments. Now we're like, yeah, this okay, is true. Cool. Like maybe yeah. a little bit, like be a little more nimble. Um, yeah. You know, shout out to the great state of Vermont. I am from uh, New York, originally downstate. I moved upstate uh, about what now 10 years. And I growing up, even from downstate, I always visited Vermont. I love, there's something about, it's like Vermont and Maine to me. They're states that have like a feel. I I can't describe it, but there's just something about Vermont that is so, it's, it's, it, 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 I don't know. You can feel it. It's a beautiful place. You're outside a lot. There's just, it's just a really beautiful place. I imagine you feel that way. You've been there, right? I mean, it's just a, I've already been there in this winter. It's great. I cross the border uh, back and forth between New York and Vermont all the time. And I love I love cities. I love upstate New York. It's absolutely beautiful. But there is something that you can't describe when you right. come back over. That. It's just like it's different. There's I don't know what it is. I know. It. So yeah. if, if anyone's listening, I mean, you guys are, who are hearing this over here, I'm sure you've been to Vermont. If you haven't, go. It's like, and you can pick. You can pick any time of year too. Winter, it's beautiful. A uh, fall, it's fall in Vermont. I mean, come on, right? Cool. Spring, summer. I mean, you can find it's. It's one of those full season. I mean, it's cold. But in that cold, there's a whole hell of a lot to do, and it's beautiful. So uh, Vermont is one of my most favorite. Um, just, uh, just avoid mud season. That you know, as soon as the the snows melts, there's the you get that slide two, that, that you don't want to come in. But come to our radio station, 161 Elm Street in Manchester, Vermont. We love to show this place to people and give tours. Uh, absolutely, we are open door. We love being a part of the community and uh, and showing everyone behind the scenes. So, Jeff, give them the website where they can go uh, to learn about the station. If they want to stream, where can they go find it? WEQX.com is the website and uh, our, our app. You just search for it in the App Store or Google Play. WEQX, free to download, listen to 24-7. Um, I'm on 6 to 10 a.m. Monday through Friday and Jam and Toast Thursday night, 9 to 11, Saturday morning, 9 to 11. Love to love to have you listen in and let us uh, know your feedback about the station. We, we want to make it yours. You did that so well. You should be in radio. Ha, ha, ha. Jeff? Hey, I really want to applaud you. You are a fantastic host of this oh, of thanks, this podcast man. here, man. You were you were born to do this. Thanks, you're really man. Good. I appreciate that. You know, podcasting is weird because you're talking into a microphone and you have no idea. And I'm talking to you, and I have no idea who's going to tune in and listen. But mm-hmm. um, it has given me the ability to meet people like you and talk to people, and um, you know, in mental health give me a forum to talk about something that I find to be very important. So like, what's better than that, man? You know? So, um, Jeff, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for doing this. And, um, special shout out to over at studios who puts this together, produces the show, um, you know, over at studios.com for anyone that's in local, they want to learn how they could do this or, or get out, do some content, go there and check it out. Um, thanks to the audience and Jeff, man, I really appreciate it. Have a great one, man. Absolutely. See ya.